guys, are you applying to college soon and wondering how you can proofread your application like a pro? If so, in this video, I'm going to give you some of my last minute tips for how to proofread your essays so that you don't have any of those pesky typographical errors that could keep you from your dream school. If you're wondering who I am, my name's Brooke. I've been helping students with their college applications and coaching students through the college essay process for over a decade and a half or so. I've also been teaching the SAT and ACT for that length of time. And you can find all my secrets online at supertutortv.com in the best SAT prep course ever, in the best ACT prep course ever. Each of these courses has over a hundred hours of video tutoring awesomeness. So go check it out if you're trying to maximize your personal score. We've had lots of awesome stories. I just had a student email me and say he improved on his ACT nine points using our program. So we're really proud of him. That's super exciting. You can also get the score of your dreams. So go check it out. Totally free. Subscribe to our mailing list, supertutortv.com slash subscribe. You can also check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I also have two books on the ACT math section. If you're taking the ACT and want something that's a little more budget friendly, go check those out. They're on amazon.com, the best ACT math books ever. They are lots of awesome sauce math practice. Okay, proofreading. So you've got your college application essay done. You've gotten feedback at this point. You've already revised it. It's looking like it's in pretty good shape but you wanna proofread it. You wanna make sure it's perfect. What do you need to do? Well, the first tip that I have is make sure that as part of this process, whether you do it early, whether you do it later, have a human proofread it for you in your finalist version that you have. What human proofreaders could you get? You could get a tutor or essay consultant kind of person. You could get somebody at your school. That could be a teacher. It could be a school counselor. It could be a librarian. You could find somebody at your local library. Local libraries often have drop-in tutoring or other services, or you might even be able to chat up a librarian and get them to read your college essay and just be like, hey, will you just read over this and see if I have any typos? <laughs> and look cute. There are also community programs where you can go over your college essays. Sometimes these are at public libraries. If you look at the calendar on a public library, they might have some free community programs. You might also just look for free programs within your community or ask your school counselor to see if they know of any as well. Mom and dad, those are good people to turn to. Friends who you have that are already in college. Find the friend who went to the best college you know of. See if they're still up late before your deadline and if they'll agree to just look over your paper really fast, older brothers and sisters, cousins or relatives who might be in college, aunts and uncles who are good writers, anybody like that, you can just get to proofread it for you. That's always awesome and super great. As a last ditch resort, or if you're watching this video and you have two hours left till the deadline and everyone you know is asleep, you can use a digital automated proofreading tool. There are several on the internet. I haven't necessarily used all of them and I can't vouch for all of these services, but there's Grammarly, there's Editor Typely, Dot com, which is typely, proofreadingtool.com, slickwrite.com, proofreadbot.com. At these sites, you can cut and paste in your essay and see if there are grammar errors, or some of them have Chrome extensions or something that you can tack onto your Google Chrome. And if you've got something in a Google Doc, it will automatically give you grammar advice and also like proofread it, but these are just bots. So they're not going to catch everything. So just be aware that this isn't perfect, but if you were in a foreign country and nobody speaks the language and you don't have anything else to turn to and your application is due in less than two hours, well, you know, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, okay? You can also use these digital tools as an intermediate step, especially if you speak English as a second language. These tools can be really helpful. Most of them are free in some form. There might be a paid version on some of them, but if you do it online, it's free. But if you speak English as a second language, this can be a really good intermediate step, meaning you like do this before you give it to the human being so the human being doesn't have to catch quite as much. If you make lots of typos, this is also a good move because again, if you're the kind of person who makes a ton of typos and somebody's proofreading your work and they find five, sometimes they won't find the other five, but if there are none to find, they might work a little bit harder to find the typos. So get it cleaned up before you give it to a human if you know you're really terrible with typos and you can use a digital automated proofing tool. Other advice when you get that human proofreader, if possible, try to give them a paper copy or have them read it not just from a screen because we do a little bit better job proofreading generally when we do it on a piece of paper. The second thing that I wanna talk about is do not neglect proofreading your activities section and shorter essays. One of the biggest mistakes that I have students make when they turn in their college applications is they have all of their essays beautifully, wonderfully proofread and perfect. And then you know what? They don't let anybody else set eyes on their activities section. 
And it is just like, oh my goodness, why did you do that? When you do proofread your short activities, I want you to read them as if you don't go to your high school. One of the biggest mistakes that students make, who I work with, is that they assume that whatever jargon their high school uses, that every high school uses it. Well, that's just not how the world works. What is jargon? I'll give you an example. Jargon is specialized language that only a few people really understand. My high school had a dance squad called the Pace Setters. They were like the little dancers, you know, who danced at assemblies and stuff, right? If you just put, I was a pace setter, nobody knows what that means. So you have to translate that. And you have to understand, oh wait, when I say that word, not everybody knows what that means. Some people might call their student council ESCO. How am I supposed to know that student council is ESCO unless you establish it, unless you say student council and then you put in parentheses S-CO or whatever you call it at your school. So if you have weird little isms at your school, MUN is model UN. I don't necessarily know that MUN is model UN. If it's not like president of the student council or captain of the football team or something really, really basic, easy to understand, everybody knows what it is, you've got to translate it for us. Now, this is particularly important for people who are from a different culture or from an international background. Oftentimes, I find that international students do these activities that might seem everyday normal to them, but that we might not totally understand, right? You might put, oh, I was the Moon Festival administrator. I'm like, what's the Moon Festival? I don't know what the Moon Festival is. Is that at your high school? Is that at your town? I don't know what a Moon Festival is. So explain what it is that you're doing to someone as if they are from an audience that has no idea what your activities are about. And make sure that everything is clear. You know, if you have sort of culturally unique things that you do, that's super awesome. That's great. I love it but you've got to explain it to me so that I understand what you're talking about. My final tip for you guys is you should always do a final proofread yourself. This is your paper. Even if you get somebody else's eyes on it, never leave the final proofread to somebody else. You trust you more than anybody else, but that doesn't mean that you aren't handicapped in some way, and you are, and I am too. So recommendation, two passes. One, print your file out on paper. I recommend you paste everything into that application and then print out the application version, the final application that you can print. And then make sure you read it on paper, read it aloud to yourself, not on a screen, and go through it with a red pen and make sure everything is tight and awesome. A few things to triple check, double check. Verb tenses. Verb tense shift is a big error that I see a lot of students make. Obviously, there's more traditional grammar errors, such as subject verb agreement, things like that. And those digital automated proofreaders are going to catch most of that stuff but they're not going to necessarily catch errors that are like verb tense shift. Some of them might, some of them might not. So careful about your verb tense shift, check all your verbs. The other thing is check word frequency. If you're using a word over and over and over again, a lot of times when you read it aloud to yourself, you're gonna to start to hear, oh my gosh, I'm excited, and then I'm excited again, and then I'm still excited. And you're using the word excited like all over the place, and then you think, oh gosh, seven excited, that's too many excited. So swap out words if you hear that you're using the same words over and over again or even the same sentence structures. Make sure you mix it up and keep an ear out for repetitive structures, words, things like that. You can also cut and paste your essays into a text to voice app. And what you do is you cut and paste your text in and then you press play and then it will read it aloud in like a robotic kind of voice. What this will do is oftentimes we insert words that we want to be there into our text because we wrote it and it's our voice. And sometimes we don't realize when we omit little words. And if you've ever done that before, you know you're a person who does that. If you do a text to voice app and it's kind of painful because you have to sit there and listen to your application essay on like a computerized bot voice. But if you do it, you will hear if you forgot a word because it won't say it. Note that this process of having this digi voice read your paper back to you will not catch punctuation. It will not catch homophone spelling errors, so you can't completely rely on it, but it is a good tool in this kind of final proofread when you have this paper that means a lot and it's really hinging on your future and you want to be super perfect. It's a good little step to put in there. And then once you get everything done and you're like, okay, this is proofread, I'm pretty confident I'm okay. Whew then it's time to submit. I usually recommend getting everything together and then sleeping on it before you click that submit button because sometimes in the middle of the night you'll have like a moment where you go, oh, that was confusing or oh, I should have changed that. You know when you send an email and then like five minutes after you sent the email, you're like, darn it. Like, and then you reread it, right? And then you're like, man, why did I say it like that? Like, uh, and you would just want to unsend the email. So my last tip is, again, I recommend sleeping on it. Like, go to bed, do this the night before, two nights before it's due. Go to bed, 
wake up the next morning, go to school, live through your life. And then if you have any of those like <gasps> tragedy moments where you remembered something that you were reading aloud and you were like, oh wait, that's confusing or that was unclear or like, why did I put that? You have an opportunity to fix it. So sleep on it, give yourself some time. And then the next day come back and after everything's there and you know you've proofread it and everything's perfect, then you can click that submit and be done and feel awesome because you did it. Congratulations on getting this far in your college application process. You're like, Brooke, I haven't even started my essay. If that's you, thumbs up too. Thanks for watching. Watch some more videos. We've got lots more tips on the college application process and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.